Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we'll be doing um KIP MLB Unit 1 Paper 2 for May June 2021. Let's get into it. Module 1 Business and its Environment. Idle Bottling Company, which produces bottled water, is located in Zen District and Joe Bloggs Island in the Caribbean. Close to 50% of the employees are residents of Zen District. Paridel contributes to homework program and is a sponsor of the Zen football team. The government plans to shut down all bottled water producers that sell regular tap water as purified water. At Paridel's annual board meeting held in February 2020, the directors were happy they had um, adhered to strict ethical business practices. This mean, meant that they did not need to be bothered by the government's attempt to close down illegal water producing operations. They decided that since the, the business had achieved a strategic objective of earning 25% profit per year for the last five years, they would create a new strategic objective, that of becoming a global firm. To accomplish this, the company would start exporting to two other Caribbean islands by November 2020 and the two South American countries by August 2022. 1A, we need to outline two ways in which Paridel Bottle and Company could benefit from its ethical business practices. Firstly, ethical practices often enhance brand reputation and consumer trust. Paridel reassures consumers about the quality and safety of their product by guaranteeing that their bottled water is purified, not regular tap water. This trust can lead to greater customer loyalty, positive word of mouth marketing, and an expanded customer base, facilitating their aspirations to become a global firm operating in local and international markets. Secondly, ethical practices can attract socially conscious investors and partners. Given Paradel's involvement in community initiatives like the homework program and sponsorship of the Zen District football team, the ethical stance aligns with corporate social responsibility, making them an attractive prospect for investors who prioritize sustainability and social impact. This alignment can open doors for partnerships or investments supporting the expansion goals into new markets for an ambition to become a global entity. Part B, expansion challenges that Paddle Bottle and Company could face when it begins to export its products. Firstly, navigating regulatory and complacence, compliance sorry, hurdles in different countries can be daunting. Each destination could have distinct packaging, labeling, and quality standards that Paridel must adhere to, demanding alterations in production processes or marketing strategies to meet diverse legal requirements. Secondly, cultural differences and consumer preferences pose a significant challenge. What's appealing in Zen District might not resonate the same way in other Caribbean islands or South American countries. To address these challenges, Paradel must conduct thorough market research to understand local tastes, taste, um, preferences, and purchasing behaviors in each unique market. This understanding may result in a need for product modifications or tailored marketing campaigns. Thirdly, logistical complexities in international trade could be a substantial obstacle Managing supply chain logistics across borders involves handling transportation, customs, tariffs, and storage, which may lead to increased cost or delays, ensuring a seamless flow of products while maintaining product quality, time, timely deliveries poses a logistical puzzle that demands strategic planning and efficient execution. Part C, discuss the importance of the three corporate social responsibility practices demonstrated by Parallel Bottling Company in the development of Zen District. 
Paddle Bottling Company's commitment to corporate social responsibility, CSR practices, has played a pivotal role in the development of Zen District. Exemplifying a multifaceted approach to community engagement and ethical business conduct. Firstly, the substantial local employment with nearly 50% of the workforce hailing from Zen District underscores the fundamental CSR principle, fostering community well-being through job creation. By providing employment opportunities within a district, Paddle contributes to economic stability, boosts local livelihoods, and bolsters social cohesion. Secondly, the involvement in the HOMA program signifies a dedication to education and skill development. Supporting educational initiatives enhances the academic prospects of a district youth while also cultivates a knowledgeable and skilled work workforce for the future. Education forms the bedrock of societal progress and Pridal's participation in this program underscores its commitment to the holistic development of the community. Moreover, sponsoring the Zen football team reflects Pridal's investment in local sports and recreation beyond proper driven objectives. Supporting sports activities foster the sense of camaraderie, promotes healthy lifestyle and nurtures talent within the community. This engagement builds a robust societal fabric for encouraging Teamwork, discipline, and community spirit among the residents. Module 2, Management of People. Student numbers at MB Business College have been declining for the past three years. The new president, Janice King, wants to increase student numbers and thereby the profitability of the college. Her areas of focus are strategic planning, worker motivation, and leadership. At line, one way in which each of the following could help President King to increase their numbers. Strategic planning. President King can leverage strategic planning by diversifying course offerings based on market demands and industry trends. Introducing new programs aligned with emerging sectors or uh, modifying existing ones that enhance relevance can help the college attract a broader student base. Moreover, establishing partnerships with local businesses for internship and job placement programs would create practical opportunities, making the college more appealing to prospective students seeking hands-on experience motivation. Implementing a rewards system for academic excellence and extracurricular achievements can motivate existing students to excel and attract new ones seeking recognition and support. Additionally, organizing mentorship programs with successful alumni or industry leaders can inspire students by showcasing tangible success stories and providing valuable guidance, making the college a more enticing educational destination. Part B, expansion of the following characteristics of a well-written goal that President King could adopt in writing the college's strategic goals. Include an example for each of the following characteristics in your response. Specific. A specific goal is unambiguous, leaving no room for misinterpretation. For instance, a goal for President King could be increasing student enrollment in the Bachelor of Business Administration program by 20% within the next two academic years. This goal outlines the target student enrollment in a particular program and quantifies the desired increase providing a clear direction for the college achievable an achievable goal is realistic and within the realm of possibility considering available resources and capabilities for example if the college has been experiencing a five percent decrease in enrollment annually Setting a goal of a sudden 50% increase might not be realistic. Instead, an achievable goal could be implementing targeted marketing strategies to increase student numbers by 10% in the upcoming enrollment period. This 
goal is valuable and aligns with feasible changes in strategy. Time bond. A time bond goal specifies a deadline or time frame for achievement. For instance, a time bond version of the previous mentioned goal could be implement targeted marketing strategies to increase the numbers by 10% in the upcoming enrollment period within the next six months. This approach introduces urgency and establishes a clear time frame for assessing progress and success. Part C. President King's beliefs about workers is based on McGregor's theory why on leadership. Based on McGregor's theory why, discuss how three beliefs that President King is likely to have about workers could help MB Business College achieve its goal of increasing student numbers. President King, adhering, adhering to McGregor's theory why, likely holds several beliefs about workers that could positively impact MB Business College's goal of increasing student numbers. Firstly, she believes that employees are intrinsically motivated and seek responsibility. This belief could translate into empowering faculty and staff at the college, providing them with the autonomy to make decisions and innovate in their respective roles. By trusting their expertise and giving them ownership employees may feel more engaged and committed, fostering in a conducive environment for attracting prospective students through innovative teaching methodologies or uh, engaging programs. Secondly, President King likely believes in employees' creativity and desire for meaningful contributions. With this belief, she could foster collaboration and idea sharing among the faculty and staff. By fostering an environment where ideas are welcomed and appreciated, the college can potentially develop new and attractive programs or initiatives that meet evolving student needs and interests. This approach could result in diverse offerings that appeal to a broader demographic of learners, thereby increasing enrollment numbers. Lastly, in line with the UI, President King likely believes in employees' capacity for self-direction and self-control. This belief might lead her to implement a leadership style, emphasizing guidance and support rather than micromanagement. By providing clear academic or operational goals and objectives and allowing flexibility in how employees achieve them, the college may foster a greater sense of autonomy and responsibility among its staff. This autonomy could lead to more efficient and innovative approaches to student recruitment, marketing strategies, and overall operational improvements, directly contributing to the college's profitability by attracting more students. Module 3 Business Finance and Accounting. This is the Okay, scenario guys, but we'll not be reading it now. Let's go straight to the question. Define each of the following terms. Fixed assets. Fixed assets represent tangible or uh, intangible resources owned by a business that the business expects to use over an extended period. These assets are intended for continuous use in the operation of the business rather than for sale. Owner's equity. Owner's equity represents the ownership interest in a business, reflecting the residual interest after it deducting its liabilities. It's essentially the amount of capital that belongs to the owners or shareholders of the business. Part B, other than complying with government regulations, outline one reason why green leaves should prepare each of the following financial statements. Income statement, for green leaves, an income statement is essentially is essential as it help it helps them understand the restaurant's financial performance. Beyond government compliance, it enables them to assess the success of the operations, identify trends in sales or costs, and make informed decisions. It's a tool for evaluating the effectiveness of their menu offerings, 
pricing strategy, and overall business efficiency. Statement of financial position or the balance sheet. It's crucial for Greenleafs as it provides a comprehensive view of the restaurant's financial health. Beyond regulatory compliance, the balance, sheets, the balance sheet helps them understand the restaurant's solvency and liquidity. This information aids in assessing the business's ability to cover debts, determine its overall worth, and identify potential areas for investment or improvement. And then we have the statement of cash flow. The statement of cash flow is, is crucial for understanding how cash is generated and used within the restaurant. It allows the it allows them to pinpoint areas where cash might be tied up, such as inventory or receivables, and assesses the actual cash generated from operations. Part C, the following balances were compiled from the source document of Kyber and Eatery for the year ended 30th of December 2020. We have these guys, we have additional information here. Ended inventory is calculated at 2000, telephone charges of 270 are still outstanding and in December, in December 1000 was prepaid to water expenses. Using the information above, prepare a statement of comprehensive income for Caribbean Eatery for the year ending the 30th of December 2020. And we have this guy, Caribbean Eatery, trade and profit and loss account for the year ending the 30th of December 2020. We have sales, less the cost of goods sold, which we purchases. We don't have any open inventory, so we have purchases. Less return outward, which is also known as purchase returned. Give us a net purchase, then we add the carriage inward of put in, and then we gonna less the in the end in inventory. And after we'll get a figure of 4,925, which we'll subtract from the net sales, giving us a gross profit of $41,975. Then we have the operating expenses, guys. We have rent, electricity, insurance, telephone. Remember, we had a standing. We had um 270 of the standing, so we gotta add it to the original figure they gave us for telephone. Then we have cooking, gas bill, then we have water rates. We have prepaid, we will prepaid 1000, so we're gonna subtract that from the original um water rates, giving us a new rate of 3986. Then we have delivery, advertisement, giving us a grand total operating expense of 40,990. Then we take that guys and we subtract it from the gross profit giving us a net profit of $985 um, and that is it guys let's go back to the document um yes that is it and if you guys want you guys could read the, the scenario that is given but we didn't do it um if you guys have any question i encourage you to place it in the comment section so that i can answer and that is it for me today see you all next time